Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on using the find and find next functions in Excel VBA to return the addresses of found values into a list box. As always, if you find this video useful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this Excel worksheet fictitious data I'll be using for this example. And I'm going to be focusing on this post-test column, column C. And I want to develop a user form so that I can use find and find next in VBA so that I can enter a value and it'll return the address of the values in this column. So for example, if I look for 31, the value 31, it would return C3, the address where that value is located on this spreadsheet. So for example, if I entered the value 31, I'd want the list box to be populated with the address C3 and the address C11 to correspond with where that value is located on this worksheet. I have here to the right this blue rectangle. If I right click and move down to assign macro, we could see that it's associated with a subroutine named sheet1.openform. So if I move to the Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11, we can see that subroutine here. It just has two lines of code, main.show main is the name of the user form that I'll be using, and main.textbox1.setfocus. And this is really here to save the user a step. So as the user form opens, they'll be entering in a search parameter. So we know that we want the focus to be set on textbox1. So that avoids the user from having to click on that text box to make it active. I also have the user form already constructed. If I go over here to the left, it indicates project, VBA project, click on main. You can see I have a user form already configured and it just has a text box, a command button, and a list box. And all of these have the default names. This would be text box one, command button one, and list box one. Here I've changed the caption over in the properties to the word find. But other than that, these are just as they would appear if they were dragged right from the toolbox onto the user form. If I move back to the worksheet, click on the blue rectangle, we can see that the focus is set to text box one. So I can just directly type and the value will appear right in that text box without having to click on it first. So if I want to search for 31, I can just type in 31. So now I need to put some code behind that command button so that it'll report the addresses. So moving back to the Visual Basic Editor and going back to the main user form, I'm going to double click on command button 1 and the code I'll be using will go in this subroutine, command button one underscore click. I'm gonna paste this code in for this subroutine in three segments. We'll start here with the first segment. And I have here at the top variables that I'm declaring. So I have WS as worksheet, last row as long, STR as string, both RNG and RNG2, they're both range, and first cell as string. Then I'm gonna set the variable WS to this worksheet, sheets data. And that's this worksheet here, the only worksheet in this workbook. Then I'm gonna set last row to equal the 
last row in column C. So it's ws.range C ampersand rows.count dot end Excel up dot row. So that'll give me the last row value. And then str will be set to text box one value. So moving over to the user form, this text box here at the top of the user form, this is text box one. This is where the user will enter a search parameter. So here str will equal that value. Moving on to the next segment, we're going to set the range variable, rng, to equal the first cell where the search parameter is located. So that's ws.range c1 colon c ampersand last row. So we're using this last row variable dot find. And there are several arguments here in the find function of most interest would be the what being equal to the str variable. So this is the search parameter. So we have what colon equal sign str. So in the case of the value 31, moving back here, the rng range would equal this range here. So rng dot address would be the string C3. So moving back to the Visual Basic Editor, I'll paste in the last segment. And that starts here with if not rng is nothing then and ends with this end if. So this segment of code here is what I just pasted. So if not range is nothing then listbox one dot add item rng address. So the first location where the search parameter is located will be added to listbox one and that's here in the user form. It's the bottom part. This is listbox one. Then first cell will be set to equal rng dot address and rng2 we set to equal rng. Next we move into this loop and it starts with do and then we set rng2 range2 to worksheet dot range c1 colon c ampersand last row so the same thing we have up here except after that instead of dot find we use dot find next and then after range 2. Then we move to another if then else here. If not range 2 is nothing then I'll proceed to this line. If range 2 address is equal to first cell then exit do. So this will exit the loop if range the range 2 address equals the address of the first cell that was returned. That means we have found all the locations of the search term. So we want to exit that loop when that, when that happens. So range to address equals first cell. It moves us out of this loop. Otherwise it continues and we have list box one add item range to address. So if it doesn't exit it's going to add range to address to list box one. Else, it's going to exit the loop, and we have end if, and then loop, and then for this if statement here, else, exit sub, and end if. So let's see how this works. I'll move back to the data worksheet, and I'll start with 31. So, I'm and I'll type in 31 and click find and it returns the address C3 
that's correct and C11 and that's also correct those are the only two cells that contain the value 31 in this post-test variable how about a value that occurs three times we have 54 that occurs three times enter 54 click find and you can see C4 C6 and C10 all added to list box 1 and those are the correct locations for that search term I hope you found this video and using find and find next to be useful and thanks for watching